now we're going to be talking about the biological effect of radiation. So we know that radiation can be you know, detrimental to your health. Radi radiation can hurt you. Now remember, what is, uh, everyone's always heard about how radioactivity is dangerous. But what is radioactivity? Well, we, we know what radioactivity is now. Radioactivity, remember, is when nuclei decay and then they emit high energy particles. Mm -hmm. The nucleus decays into something else that emits high energy particles like alpha particles or gamma particles or beta particles or maybe other types of particles. And because those particles have a lot of energy in them, they can be dangerous to living things because it's dangerous to absorb a lot of energy that can mess up the molecules, the molecular structure in your body. For example, it might mess up the DNA and cause mutations in the DNA. So the reason that radioactivity is, dip is dangerous is because of those high energy particles. And the purpose of the material for this problem is to assess how dangerous the radiation is. How dangerous the radiation is. Well, one of the aspects of how dangerous it is is how much radiation it's giving you. You have to focus on how much radiation you're getting. Uh, and one natural way to focus on the amount of radiation you're getting is the number of joules per kilogram. That would be a gray. which is joules per kilogram. For example, suppose somebody absorbed eight joules per kilogram of energy. What does that mean? Well, that means that each kilogram of their body absorbed eight joules of energy. So for example, if they have a mass of, I don't know what's an appropriate mass. If they have, a, I don't know, I don't know my metric units very well. But, uh, Let's see, a kilogram is like 2.2 pounds, or is 2.2 pounds a kilogram? I don't know. If an organism had a mass of 50 kilograms, and it was receiving 8 joules per kilogram, then it would be receiving 800 joules of energy overall. No, 400 joules overall. If an organism had a 50 kilogram mass, and it was receiving 8 joules per kilogram, the total amount of energy would be 400 joules. Yeah. So is it better for this number to be big or small, if you want to be safe? Small. Yeah, you want to receive less energy because it's the energy that can destroy the molecular structure. Mm -hmm. Now, it turns out that oftentimes instead of using this unit for the energy you're receiving, oftentimes instead the amount of radiation is expressed in rads. And a rad is 0.01 joules per kilogram. There's going to be a lot of unit conversion here. If you're receiving 8 joules per kilogram, let's figure out how many rads you're receiving. Let's go through that together because I think that's pretty tricky. We're going to do this as a unit conversion. So our starting units are joules per kilogram. And what are our target units going to be? 0.01 joules per kilogram. That's right. But let's actually think of that as rads. Oh, it's okay. going to be better just to think of it as rads. So the, the target unit is rads here. Okay. How shall we do? So we're going to do a unit conversion. Now what units do we want to get rid of? Well, we want to get rid of the units joules per kilogram. Right. And what units do we want to replace that with? Rads. So this is the way to set up the conversion ratio. And now what number should I put down here to get the correct conversion ratio? Well, we know that one rad is 0.01 joules per kilogram. So the way we're going to get rid of the joules per kilogram and replace this with rads is by using this conversion ratio that we have here. One rad is 0.01 joules per kilogram. Mm -hmm. Now the joules per kilogram here is going to cancel with these joules per kilogram. Notice that normally I would normally write joules per kilogram vertically. But here I'm treating it like a single unit that I want to get rid of, so it's more convenient to write it horizontally so that I can fit one fraction inside of another fraction, just as a notational issue. So those will cancel, and now we'll be down to rads. Okay, so then how many rads do we have? What calculation do we have to do? 800? That's right, 8 divided by 0 0.01 would be 800. Well, I hope that made sense, and I hope that seemed easy, but actually, I certainly oftentimes get really confused when I try to do this conversion, so it's important to have it really clear in your notes very clearly how to convert. So what we saw here is how to convert from joules to kilogram into rads. Mm -hmm. And the thing that you do is you treat this like a single unit. You just treat as if there's just a single unit like meters. And you put it on the bottom here, and then we put in our conversion, 1 rad per 0.01.
So the point was, if you're trying to convert into rads, don't try to convert into 0.01 joules per kilogram. That's too confusing. Just try to convert into rads. And the only purpose of the 0.01 joules per kilogram is to give us this conversion ratio over here. Well then, let's say that somebody is being exposed to three joules per kilogram. Let's figure out how many rads they were exposed to. You just divide by 0.01? That's right. Start so writing that out. same basic approach. One rad is 0.01 joules per kilogram. Mm -hmm. So that gives us 300 rads. So when you think about rads, you should remember that they're basically energy over mass, except they have this little number here that can mess us up. Now, let's say somebody was exposed to 50 rads. How many joules per kilogram is that? Let's try to work that out using, again, a systematic unit conversion. So, 0.5? That sounds good. That's a good setup. Now we want to put rads on the bottom and joules per kilogram on the top, because we want the rads to cancel. And what are the numbers? Well, we know one rad is 0.01 joules per kilogram. And now this tells us now we're multiplying by 0.01. So that would give us 50 times 0.01 is 5 joules per kilogram of radiation. All right, so now we've seen how we can convert between rads and joules per kilogram. Some other things that we'll need. Here's our conversion ratio. Maybe the way I should write this then is I'm going to write the joules per kilogram horizontally, the fraction horizontally, because that's the way we're actually going to write it when we're solving problems. We're going to treat the joules per kilogram just like a single unit. That way it fits into our conversion ratios nicely. All right, so one thing that affects how damaged someone is going to be by radiation is how many rats they're being exposed to. Mm -hmm. However, it also turns out that there's another factor. Some particles' radiation is just more intrinsically damaging than others. It turns out that some, say, um, I don't know which ones are the most damaging, uh, maybe a neutron might be more damaging than, say, an X-ray, for example. Different types of particles have greater effects, even if they have the same number of rats. So we need another factor, which is the RBE. I believe that stands for the relative biological effect. This just tells you how intrinsically damaging the different types of particles are. So each particle has a different RBE. Intrinsic damage from different types of particles. OK, and then the overall measure of the health effects would come with the REM. And this is what the homework calls the dose. Although in the book, they call something else the dose. In the book, they actually measure the dose in joules per kilogram. But in the homework, they're using REM for the dose. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Or, well, it, it was the radiation dose. Yeah, REM. Actually, I think they're ambiguous. They use the word dose for a bunch of different things in the homework. OK. So one thing they mean here, so maybe I wouldn't even call that the dose. They're just ambiguous. But anyway, this represents the overall health effects. And if you think about it, there's two things that will influence your health effects. How many rads you're being exposed to, and the RBE of that type of radiation. So an REM is rads times RBEs. So for example, if you're exposed to eight rads with an RBE of four, what would the REM be? Uh, 42. 
32? 32. Right. So this just, you should just do what seems natural here. This means that REM is the number of rads times the number of RBEs. So here it would be 8 times 4, or 32. And you can see this is taking into account both how many joules per kilogram the person is being exposed to and the intrinsic damage that you get from those types of particles. So by the way, if you're going to be hit by radiation, do you want it to be radiation with a large RBE or a small RBE? Small. Yeah, that would be better. And you want a small number of rads. And then the REM tells you the overall health effects. I think REM stands for something like Rigjin equivalent measure, which, which is not very intuitive. But what it means is the overall health effects. REM is telling us the overall health effects.